My name is Josh, and I guess you could say I like shoes. An addiction, mine is shoes. It started with my very first pair of kangaroos and the LSC made for tennis. I played none of it, but I owned them in brown and black suede. But that was hardly the beginning of my obscene spending, saving up pennies, parental begging. Even now, if I only got 40 bills, I'ma buy a sack of weed and go straight to Marshall's. Cause one time at Ross, I found Nike Zoom Air, 14 bucks. I bought two pairs, I always do that there, so there's no need to despair if my kicks get ugly from somewhere in town. Actually, I fell in love with the MX1 model straight away. That was like the first shoe that I put my foot into and tried that shit on. It was just like, yeah, I love that shape. Still now, I think that shoe is like number one shoe for me. If ever I see that shoe in a nice enough makeup or colorway that I've been after, that's the shoe I get most excited about or want to get the most. So, probably the MX1. Again. Still yet to wear them. These as well, the flip chai so uh, one of my favourite shoes to have come out like, in recent years this shoe. Don't fucking love this shoe. Still does though. Um, Flip Charles is still on Berwick Street in Soho in London. They have a very good account with a lot of live brands including Nike, Adidas, Asics, Sockany to name a few. This has kept me going back there for the past few years. Collaborations have affected recent goings on with brands and stuff as well because they're making everything exclusive, everything special. They're clever because they open up the different sort of markets for different people. Like today, a Supreme and Stone Island collaboration came out between those two brands. And like, if you'd asked someone five years ago whether they would have thought those two would have collaborated, it wouldn't have been in a million years because they're from such a different spectrum. Skateboarding used to have this attitude of, if you don't skate, we don't want to fuck with you. But now the fashion, now all the brands that deal with it have seen a, a way in which they can get more money and. Like I said, open up the interest of people from other spectrums and it's really doing that and that's something that's like quite apparent I think. Sneakers and Stuff is another store with high tier accounts. Recently opening in Shoreditch it created quite a lot of hype. They had some exclusives, some collaborations and postponed some releases until the store opening. So a lot of people, including myself, were there on the day. We spoke to my guy Marvin. He works at Sneakers and Stuff. We originally met for a mutual appreciation of shoes when he was working in Foot Patrol. Now the culture's changed because there's different clientele. Well, that's from a perspective of working in the shop. I think before it was, like I said, it was people who appreciate trainers and it, like they just like to either wear or collect trainers. Uh, now it's people who are trying to make money from it. Like I said, the internet's always been around, not always, but there was always forums like the Crooked Tongues Forum, Bape, all that stuff. But now it's just like online on Facebook and uh, Instagram, so like everyone's got access to it now. Like. There's more collaborations as well, so that's always getting people interested every day, in fact. <laughs> you see it online, on social media. Uh, I think it comes out every day. Yeah, every day, man. Like, and then it's one collaboration is going to have, like, that's just a few colours of the Pharrell Superstar colour. There's 50 in total. So that is literally one colour for everyone. So, I don't know, like, one seems like everyone's a track at the minute. <laughs> it used to be quite a rare or special occasion when I used to get shoes as a child growing up. Um, it would be like a very 
happy time for me. I don't know. I, I look back on those moments fondly because it, it wouldn't happen very often. And when it did, it was like a big moment. I had my fresh shoes for the year that I'd beat and wear down until they were literally unwearable. So maybe it's something to do with that. I like the feeling of having something good on your feet, being like, feeling like happy with that you've got something clean or something nice or something a bit rare or something that you spent time with or went through trouble to, in order to get. So that's probably another reason. So it was nice. About 200, just over 200, I think. I don't really like to know that one of those numbers and shit, but the last time someone counted, they told me it was just over 200 and I think it's around that now, still ordering that, just over. This is a cross trainer for low, it's called, and right, the toddler's 11. This shoe's from 1991, but the shape of it, I just love it. I think that shape's sick. Wish these were my size, I'd wear them all day. Dope shoe though. Another, just look at the box. Everything from back then just feels so much nicer. I like, feel like you're getting a lot more when you're buying things from this sort of era. This is a cross trainer low, same year 1991 dead stock. Dope shoe, UK three and a half. I'm not gonna be able to wear them, but put them on my mantelpiece piece or something. Kish Cash is another guy we caught up with. Having been doing this for 30 plus years, to say he knows his shit is an understatement. Back to what I've said on making and building relationships within the industry, Kish is a perfect example of how you can benefit from who and what you know. Receiving samples, unreleased shit, and even landing a job as a buyer at Soul Heaven, a well-known UK retailer. So yeah, when did I start collecting kicks? Um, well, the thing is, I never actually started collecting, you see. What happened was, was that I'd buy a pair of trainers and then I'd buy another pair and another pair and just not throw away the previous ones. So it sort of became an accumulation. How many pairs do I have? It's a contentious issue. I mean, I was talking to Steve Bryden the other day and he was like, because I've never counted them really. And he was saying, oh, Kishoki got like, you know, four or 5,000. I was like, what, are you sure? I was going, I don't know, man. He goes, yeah, well, he's one of the few who's seen everything in its entirety. He's seen my storage, he's seen here, he knows what's up. And, um, you know, he's old, you know, he's, he's, one of, he's one of the OGs as well. You know, he, he was an you know, integral part of Crooked Tongues for many, many years from the start. So, I mean, he seems to think that's what I've got, but I ain't got a clue. I really don't. I mean, I've got over 2,000. I'll give you that, but just by working it out, I mean, behind us here, we've probably got like 500, maybe, I don't know. Um, maybe a bit more, and there's the ones in the other room. I don't know, it's, it's, it's a funny one. Kish has also become a fellow co-host of the event Crep City, the UK's biggest sneaker festival. That's fantastic, I mean, it's a, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful, um, celebration of all things related to footwear. Um, it's one of the biggest in Europe. It's grown and grown and grown over the past few years into something. You started off at Nottingham Arts Club, do you know what I mean? I went to the first one. Um, and uh, yeah, Domi, Domi invited me down, Domi P's to run that. And uh, it was, yo, Kish, because he, you know, people know I'm into my kicks. So they were like, yo, you got to come down to this and check this out. And um, I think one might have posted it on for Crooked, I knew about it. I can't remember, anyway, so many years ago, whatever. Um, it started from something so small, and it's grown into something fantastic, it really has. Um, you know, it's wonderful. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, that's that's how it is. But yeah, no, Ron, you know, Ron, Paul and Vic started it, and then there's Oshin and Morgan, and taking it to the next level, and then I come in and do something with it. It's just a really wonderful team effort, really. People from different approaches and different loves and whatever, you know, um, um, just into kicks, really. And it's great because it brings people together. It's a massive community. You see where it's grown, it's fantastic, you know? You see the mad queue that Crep City has, you know? 
and passionate and people just being patient and waiting. It's phenomenal. It really is. It really is. I've been coming to Crep City for a few years now. It's an event that happens two or three times a year. I've really enjoyed watching the boom and steady growth of the events, starting from a little bar in East London somewhere to now filling up the Truman Brewery. I've got to give mad props to Ron and Morgan for doing it. They were proper pioneers for the London movement and it's nice to be able to talk, trade and buy things of people who share a mutual interest. bought a lot of nice bits, met cool people and done a load of cool shit in the time that I've been doing this. It's truly endless, but I do know that I'm just scratching the surface and I don't plan on giving up anytime soon. Like a rubber band, my brother ran me. Rep cruise, we the summer's band, summer.